Uh, this is an Australian delivered 2015 Audi 8V S3 and we'll take this cover off of the top of the engine. Uh, the engine underneath is the 2 litre 4 cylinder EA888.3 engine that I believe is the common to the Mark 7 Golf R, the Mark 7.5 Golf R uh, and the Audi S3. Uh, I think slight iterations or versions of that also in the Golf GTI and probably in other Volkswagen products. But uh, this car had a rough idle and the rough idle was especially evident during cold starts. The RPM would uh, jump up and down a bit. It would almost actually stall out uh, sometimes on real cold starts and the RPM would hunt around a little bit, a little bit too much for what it should do. And you could feel misfires through the seat of the car. Not, not enough to ever trigger fault codes, but just feel that the engine wasn't running smooth at idle. Even when the engine was warm, uh, if you, yeah, uh, sort of, uh, on close observation, you could, you could sense or feel that the engine wasn't running smoothly. And so to address that rough idle, to start with, uh, replace the coils and the spark plugs, and uh, that didn't resolve it. Uh, it. did improve the performance of the car a little bit, perhaps, but uh, it still had that idle issue. So the next step was to look at the intake ports and a uh, bit of a lesson uh, in, in this system, and I'm not an expert on these Volkswagen engines, but I'd say this is something to do with the PCV valve system here, because I've seen a line that comes out of the back of it and goes over here to, to, to this intake here. And so I'd say that uh, any which way, the PCV valve system on this car is gonna be dumping oil into the intake. And at least through that line there, I'd say at least under boost conditions, uh, the crankcase is going to vent and uh, it doesn't vent to atmosphere, it vents to the intake uh, for emissions reasons and that is probably going to put some oil down into there. If you've got catch cans fitted then, then or catch can or catch cans depending if you can interrupt the vacuum circuit of this I'm not sure that then maybe you can remove some of that oil but otherwise that oil is going in the intake through the turbo and out the other side and if you've ever removed your intercooler or the charge pipe from the intercooler up here to the thr throttle body then quite often you'll you know, if you've done that you'd notice that there's quite often oil in that line and so that oil that comes through the PCV system into the intake ultimately comes up here to the intake manifold and through the intake runners the intake ports and and is ingested into the engine. But in that process, some of that oil actually uh, forms carbon deposits in the intake ports, which are obviously very hot, and you've got oil coming in there, uh, and, and it effectively solidifies and builds up a nasty carbon deposit, a gunk in there, uh, in those intake ports. Uh, so even if you run fuel injector cleaner and all the time, it's not going to clean, clear that up. It's not a fuel injector issue. It's, um, yeah, it's a carbon deposit in, the, in those intake runners uh, and intake ports. So uh, just to then iterate the differences in the fueling systems of these cars, the different versions of it. So this Australian delivered car has port injection fitted. So that's, uh, and if you want to check your car, uh, if, it, if it has it. So I believe that all the Australian delivered Mark 7 Golf Rs, Mark 7.5 Golf Rs, uh, 8VS3s uh, all have port injection. The US delivered cars, I believe, do not have it. Uh, the European cars do have it. Um, but if you want to check, maybe I'm wrong. I have heard that some of the Australian Mark 7 Golf R owners saying they don't have it. But if you want to check, it, remove that, remove that cover. There's your intake manifold and you're looking for this black tube, plastic tube here. It's held on by two Torx bit screws, one there, one there. So you're looking for that black tube that's running behind there. It's just above the, the intake manifold where it, it attaches to the cylinder head. Comes along there, there's even a little clip there, the low pressure fuel line that weaves its way around there. 
and comes up to the back of the fuel pump here. What I'm touching on, that's where it attaches. I believe it's probably pulling low pressure uh, fuel before it goes through the high pressure fuel pump uh, to deliver low pressure fuel. I don't know, 40, 50, 60, 70, it's probably 60 or 70 PSI through to this uh, rail here. This, so this is the supplementary port injection rail. On all of the cars, there is a direct injection rail that is underneath this manifold. So it's a steel uh, rail and all of the cars, no matter where they're delivered in the world with this engine, this EA 888.3, they have that direct injection. But these Australian delivered and the European delivered cars have supplementary port injection fitted to it. And it's important to note from what I understand that this supplementary port injection is not used for performance reasons, like for, yeah, for, for performance, it's used for emissions reasons. And so it's only active at low load. I believe, I originally believe this was only active at low RPM and low load, but now I understand that it is used even at higher RPM. As long as you aren't mashing the accelerator pedal, then it's probably using uh, some of the port injection fuel as well. So unlike my BMWs where we've added port injection for performance reasons, it comes on after 2000 RPM and after 50% throttle, this is almost the exact opposite. It, it, it comes on at low RPM. Um, at, well, actually it's not so much the RPM range that determines it, but the position of the throttle or the load that you're trying to put on the engine. And so it's used for emissions reasons and uh, to prevent low speed pre-ignition events, um, particularly at idle, which is a, a, a potentially a common issue on, on um, yeah, on direct injected cars. So even at low speeds or idle, low engine speeds, idle and, and with low load, this is spraying fuel into the intake port, uh, which a lot of people believe should be cleaning any oil deposits off. So any of that oil that comes through, that this effectively petrol, fuel in here, gasoline, whatever you want to call it, it should be washing the, the oil off of those intake ports. But as you're going to see, that isn't the case. It doesn't entirely do that. It definitely keeps it cleaner than cars that don't have the port injection, but there is still a build-up. This engine has 147,000 kilometres on it, so I think what's that, 100,000 miles or thereabouts, and it had a significant build-up. So this uh, port injection, uh, that's what it is, that's where it's located and you can identify it on your car if you want to know if you have it. So cars without it are going to have a faster build up of carbon deposits in the intake runners and are probably going to need cleaning of those intake runners or intake ports more often. Uh, but cars that that do have the port injection it's going to build up slower but when it does build up it's going to have a worse effect on the on the performance or the idling of the car uh, because that is the fuel that's being sprayed in and if there's all those gummy carbon deposits in there they're going to absorb some of that fuel that's being sprayed and distort the the delivery of that fuel to the cylinder to the combustion chamber and that's going to lead to misfires and a rough idle, which is what happened with this car. So watch on and we'll show you what it looked like uh, once we took this manifold off and how it got cleaned up. The port injection sprays on top of this little plate here. So that's nice and clean, but down in there, yeah, not so good. That's even with port injection. Now here's some photos taken before I did the walnut blasting process and perhaps you can appreciate yeah, how gunked up these intake ports were from those oil deposits and this little deflector plate in the middle of the intake port there that does just slide out you'll see in some of the later photos uh, after I've done the process it's, it's removed. Uh, but uh, if you don't have the specialised walnut blasting tools and you don't want to buy them, there are ways of cleaning these ports just with simple hand tools and uh, even cable ties. And I'll put a link in the description to one of those videos. Otherwise, let's move on to the clean ports. And here we go. This You'll see that little deflection plate is removed for this photo, uh, but you see now how clean they are after the walnut blasting process has taken place. Moment of truth, uh, cold start after walnut blasting. And that 
settle down quickly and that feels a lot better. So prior to this, uh, yeah, the RPM was just jumping around a little bit and you could feel misfires coming through the seat effectively. And uh, yeah, the RPMs would move around a little bit more.